So continuing on with what I believe is part six. Don't hold me to that because I'm nowhere near a computer right now, but I do believe we're at part six. And that is the part where we get to uh, finishing one of these. As you can see, I've got one right here and I've already put the arm back on. And I'll show you how I did that. And we got this one here for Mr. Adam Savage himself. And this is how they come out very raw, very much like the original, very crude. And of course, we're gonna clean up the edges and, and sand down a certain amount of the seam line. But when they got down here, they left the seam line showing because they didn't care. So we're gonna be uh, doing a bit of that. And I'll just show you really quickly, as if you haven't ever seen someone sand before, I'm gonna do this. And that's gonna leave a certain amount of that seam showing. I'm not gonna get rid of it all the way at all. I'm gonna break that all off. And we're just gonna leave it just the way they did. Same darn, same damn deal to a degree. Now this is mine, it's not Adam, so he may want me to leave it even more, but it actually shows like that on the original. Uh, of course, we're gonna be opening up the eyes and we are also uh, I already put this one back on and I forgot I'm supposed to be showing you this stuff so I didn't put this one on yet and I'm going to show you how that's done wagons so here we go we've got our formula 27 and the, I usually use Evercoat metal glaze which is kind of a, a blue color um, this stuff is very similar and I can get this at West Marine and there's two of them in this town and they're usually just about everywhere that's near the ocean. If not, you can order it online uh, from Amazon, but I get this local. This is about, I don't know, $30 for one of these things. It's not cheap, but it's way better than Bondo. It's easier to sand, easier to work with. It's just a better material and it's waterproof. <laughs> which is great if you build model submarines, and I know some of you watching this do. So we're gonna mix up a little, little bit of this stuff. And it looks like I've made too much. See, you get to see the goof ups too. Okay, so, and we're gonna take the kicker here. It's just two part, just like Bondo. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. You only need a little bit. We're gonna stir it all around. Now, the reason I didn't put this down inside the cup is uh, a very good question. No, I like to use the ends of them so I can get to it easier. And it does have a tendency to go over the edge, but that's okay. As long as it's all mixed in there. Now, I have also sanded this, pre-sanded it, and you know fixed the knuckles and everything. Uh, so it's pretty much like the original. And now we're gonna take this being very careful and putting it down in here like so. I mean, this guys, this is not rocket science, but you're probably wondering, because you've been watching this for quite a while now, the construction of this, how is it gonna put those arms back and not have some nasty seams showing? Well, this is how. Even Tyler was wondering. Mm -hmm. Even I was wondering. Was Rosie wondering? <laughs> probably. Okay, so now we're going to slip it down like that. It's like magic. And it just, uh, now I'm just going to kind of do this. And we got a nice little, nice little uh, connection happening there. So I'm going to get this right in the right spot. This stuff will go off in about, oh, five minutes. I don't think Tyler believes me because I'm always telling him stuff's going to go off in five minutes. <laughs> So there's a little bit around here that I need to do. And the nice thing about this stuff is that it remains for quite a while uh, at a consistency where you can easily uh, carve it and grind it and stuff till, till you uh, have a nice blend. Whereas Bondo has a tendency to go off rather quickly and you've got this sort of cast iron garbage you're trying to to reshape, it just the stuff is so hard. Now that's very sloppily, 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 yeah, sloppily done. 
I'll make sure that's moved up there. Now we're just waiting for it to go off and when it does go off, then I'll uh, be able to rough shape this with the sandpaper and some carving tools um, and it'll be completely blended off. I like using popsicle sticks, they really work good. Thank you, Dennis and Bob Sukotek. So we'll come back here in a minute and we will show, uh, after this sets up, a little bit of sanding and then we'll show the next step that makes this look so fine. So here we go with the stuff set up pretty good. And now I'm gonna sand it all smooth to the rest of it. Tyler's working on Adam Savage's. Getting that one ready to do next. This looks like it's a lot, but it really isn't a lot to do. It goes very quickly. So I'm gonna sand like this. And you can see how it's grafted back on pretty well. We're good at reattaching limbs around here. And you see, it's unlike Bondo, it's still soft enough that I don't have to kill myself sanding it. Now, if you wait till tomorrow, it gets a little harder to sand, but it's still better. So if you want to get away with Bondo, you're welcome to. Please post videos uh, of do it yourself doing that and the sweat come in off your brow and everything else because you're not going to sand it as smooth and as fast as that was just done. You got that nice crease in there, which I'll make even better with uh, some air filled putty, air cure putty. I'm uh, getting that pretty good. You can see how it's filling all the little valleys and stuff. There was obviously, uh, this will be smoother than my sculpture originally was, which is probably the reason that theirs is somewhat smooth in areas. And I did sand off a lot of the seams, as it turns out, because I checked on the pictures over there on the computer and you could see it. Uh, so I'm trying to match that as best I can. But there are some seams showing, and they're showing where it was away from camera. We only saw this in a little wide shot like this at the foot of the bed. And then from that point on, it was from here up pretty much. And so I would suspect they were told, don't worry about the feet. Don't worry about that. It's not going to show on camera. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We'll stick some primer on it in a minute so we can see what we got, check it out. It looks pretty good. And so we got both those arms attached really well. I could never work on the sculpture the way I'm working on it now when it was on that, that on its back like that. Now I can, of course. This stuff is very sharp, this, uh, this flash, so I'm really being careful not to cut myself. And this is where they left the seam showing the most, and odd for obvious reasons. So we gotta do a lot of this. But I think what we're gonna do next, just because it'll be fun to do, is cut the top of the head off. Which is something I've been dying to do. I don't know why Adam's got me going about having the eyeballs move. And we just talked to Tech Optics and we got uh, we asked them to give us a price on matching the eyes exactly. And if you don't know who Tech Optics is are, who they are, you can go look them up at techoptics.com. They've been making eyeballs for years. I mean, I, I think the first time I ever used them was back in the 80s. And uh, they're now used by a lot of people uh, for a lot of movie work and puppet work. So we got more uh, sanding to do, obviously, but what I want to do next is uh, cut the top of the head off, and then we'll come back, put some primer on this so you can see how good it looks uh, in a minute. Yeah. You can get closer. It won't bite. I've never done brain surgery before. <laughs> it 
worse than the smoke. Keep it really close so you catch it. Ah, it's perfect. Almost. I was hoping it would go this easily, but because Tyler and I did such a masterful job of casting it up, Oh, I catch the dust in there, pull it around. There we go. Look at that. That is awesome. Woohoo! And now, as you can clearly see, we can put a brain in there or anything we want. But now we can get to the eyes. And that's why they cut theirs very much the same way. Now, what's interesting about where they cut it is if you look at it like this, you don't see the line and that's why they had it cut back so far so that when they were doing that straight on shot you didn't see the line which they kept open I guess so they could get to the the controller inside so this goes back rather well I should have marked it so that I would know exactly how it went back but it, it pretty much conforms pretty well now I'm, I'm gonna have to put uh, a bit of putty on it and stuff uh, just a bit and then go around with a thin, thin knife and cut it again after it hardens up. But that, that worked out really well. So the next thing we're gonna do, because that's what needs to be done, as long as we're in the apartment here, as soon as I change bits, is we're gonna cut open the eyes when I come back in a minute for more madness. We're gonna do eyeballs, and I'm hoping I don't screw this up. I'm I'm gonna start here, go really close. Trying not to screw things up here. It's pretty thick right there. This stuff cuts so easily. What I really love about the 1630. Now I'm only gonna go so close and then I'm gonna use uh, a hobby knife and uh, some sandpaper and a file to get it exact. Because I could make damage, I could do terrible things with this Dremel tool if I'm not careful. But I'm pretty close, so let's do this one. Thinner. Ah, I love 16:30. The breakfast of champions. dare go any closer with this. I want to get underneath this edge here. You got the real thickness. A little bit under there. Pretty good now. 
there's some inside too. We'll get that in a minute. Because 1630 is so, uh, it's got the filler in it, uh, it becomes, you need know, a dust brush. One of these. Now I can really see what I'm dealing with here. You can literally just carve this stuff so easily like that. Once you get that open, uh, that's the beauty of it, of, of 1630. Like down here where I can't possibly get a Dremel tool in there in the corners of the eyes, I would be able to get down in there in five seconds. This, and what I can't get into, I will get into using a, a uh, file to round it out. See how quickly that was affected? And uh, we're gonna do same thing here. I wish all things and modeling and building things went as quickly as this went. This is really, really something. But 1630 without the fiberglass in it is it's just not strong and it just will, will break so easily. I mean, look. That had a little bit of fiberglass in it. I mean, it just breaks. Uh, so you really, that's why we put that reinforcement in there. And I can get pretty close with this and then of course a little sandpaper really clean it off but I'm going to have this whole eye out in a second here. There we go. Oh, I'm loving this. And there's the eye open. Right before your very eyes, right here on Patreon, SNG Patreon. Okay, this has got to be pretty thin down here up to the lid. And then, of course, the eyeballs will fit right in. Now, these are not the right size. These are like 30 millimeter, but we're going to have it about there. And then they'll be able to move with the radio control, which will be <laughs> really cool. I wasn't going to do that until Adam brought it up. And I said, you know, I got to do it too. Because, you know, I want to be one of the cool kids. So anyway, we're going to do this eye. Uh, also, I'm going to carve it out. And uh, what else was I going to do on this? Um, I think that's it for, oh, I was going to show very quickly here. And in fact, I'll do that, not now, but in, as soon as I get this carb, we'll come back. And I'll show you how I'm going to fix this. Okay, so what I'm going to use is this. Now, I know a lot of you use this, and you think very highly of it. It's okay. This is what I can get locally. I need to order a epoxy sculpt. It's the best. It's like modeling clay that's epoxy. It takes like five, six hours to set up. You get plenty of working time with it. You can smooth it. You can sculpt things like this with it. But this is similar, and it's, it's basically the same material. It's a two-part material that you mix together, because after all, it's a, an epoxy. So I'm going to rebuild this ear using the, uh, I think that's how you, is it, is it, is it millet, millpot? I, how do you pronounce that? Milliput? Milliput, okay, I'll go with that. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of that, a little bit of A and a little bit of B, equal amounts, just like all resins. So, and I'm gonna mix these together once I get them a little warm in my hand because it's cold in here. And uh, it'll mix better if you get it warm first. And I feel like Deadpool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now it's pretty soft, so I can uh, mix it around like this thoroughly. And we were going to have a nice clay, which will get hard as a rock and match the rest of this. So you really don't worry about losing things like a toe or a part of an ear that much. Um, you don't need to throw away something, call it a reject, just because you have one little problem. So not that you ever did, but it was harder to do back in the old days because all they had was this kind of putty. So I'm gonna do this like that, like that, like this, like let's fold it over and over and over again endlessly. You can do it with gloves, it's harder for some reason. So just you can wash it off with alcohol. So now we have we're missing the ear right there. So I have more than enough, so there's a handy dispensary for it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pushing it in there. 
and we get to watch Steve sculpt live with chemicals. Wonderful, wonderful world of chemicals. And in no time, we'll have the ear. And since I'm the original sculptor of this, you know, I know exactly what to do, so. See, it's just like clay. And so, what I need now is some sculpting tools, and then I'll be able to shape that just right, he says knowingly. Throw the cork. Yeah, the metal ones, the ones I need. In the meantime, I love pencils. One of the best sculpting tools in the world. Second only to, oh, here's some right here. Yeah, seeing how I'm working on a sculpture right there, it makes sense that, now, this stuff, even if I don't get it the way I like it exactly, I can shape it even more with sanding in the morning and sand it more. What I could use is a, some alcohol, which just happens to be right here covered in silicone. Luckily, it's set up, so. You said you needed alcohol? I always need alcohol. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's starting to look more like an ear, isn't it? Okay. So alcohol. Oh, is that the old alcohol cup? Yep. Oh, cool. Put it on top of that. Come on. Just a little bit. Just enough to get my fingers wet. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Right. Sound like I'm talking to Zena. Come on, Zena, Zena, Zena. <laughs> you see how wonderfully this stuff shapes with the alcohol. The alcohol actually smooths it. Since alcohol is something that will actually cut epoxy, this is rather ideal. And you, plus, you can smooth it into the rest of it, the rest of the uh, structure. And you get a pretty good match. I think that's going to do it. And then likewise, keep my eye on that for a while. I hope it doesn't roll over and hurt the ear, but I don't think it will. We're missing a toe down here, so I'm going to move this around this way. And remind me not to bump into that, that ear, guys. Mm, I just see something I don't like here. There it goes. Okay, so I got more of this, so hmm. brush off that. You see, uh, when I made up this one, there was still clay in the toe. Can you see that okay? Now, what I'm going to do, because it will never stick to this, is I'm going to take this stuff and smear it on there so it gets kind of sticky and nasty and gooey, but we like things that way at SNG. So I can hear Gary Hughes now. Uh, I know, have mercy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to reshape the toe back. Just like magic. Where's Adams? Okay. His has the toe still. So we got that. And I'm going to make myself a toe. Out of sculpting epoxy. Look at that. Right back. No problem. So when you take something out of the mold and it's not perfect, don't throw it across the room and scream and cry like I've done in the past. And just, you know, hey, I can fix that. You know, I kind of had the feeling of a, t of, a, of a nail there, so I'll put that back in there too. The original didn't, but, you know. There, toe back. And when it, when it dries all the way, it sets up. I'll be able to shape it with a bit of sanding. But now we have the toe back. Now, I didn't bother to look underneath the toe. Had I looked underneath, I would see that I need to do a little shaping there. Not much, though. It'll never show on camera. That's pretty good. Now, did I wreck the ear? No. Okay, so we have a little bit of this left, so what I'm gonna do with it 
is uh, actually what Tyler's going to do with it. He's going to fill in all the remaining cracks yeah, on this. Yeah. yeah, but that's basically because uh, we don't like to waste it. Uh, and again, that's mill put, mill, milliput, milliput. I've heard people call it millet, but whatever. Uh, so this stuff is not very expensive either. I think the other stuff is a bit more. It's like seven or eight dollars for one of these. Uh, up oh, eleven ninety nine. But you know it'll last for a while because you don't you know build whole things out of it. You just fix stuff with it. So that pretty much brings us to what we're going to do on this today. I have more sanding to do. I can open up the navel uh, and pick at a few areas. But it's basically tomorrow uh, we'll be ready to go to the next level, which is uh, we're going to primer it. Uh, and look for all the little flaws and once that's done then we're going to paint it all flesh color and the way they painted it was with acrylic paint or latex house paint it almost looks like and one of these and they brushed it on because you can see the brush strokes. Uh, Adam and I were talking about that. He, he wants to use a lacquer paint. He thought maybe they used a lacquer but I don't think lacquer is thick enough so it either was enamel or it was uh, latex or acrylic. I think they had acrylic paints in the 60s didn't they? Yeah. Who knows? That's what I'm going to use. So you'll see that uh, next. Not today, but next, later on in this video you're currently watching right now. Okay, so we're back at the Star Child, and uh, we got Tyler here. He's just cut off the head on, <laughs> well, the top of the head off. He did brain surgery on Adams, and he's getting the eyes open. And what I've done is I've pretty much got this to where I like it. I'm not 100% happy yet, but it's pretty close. And I wanted to get some paint on it so I could really see what I need to fix and what I don't need to fix. Being that the, the actual thing was pretty rough. So what I did is um, I took some just regular old acrylic white paint. It could be any brand, just acrylic paint. You get from the store, like uh, from Michael's, where you're gonna paint a painting with it. That's not particularly a model paint. And then I took Proline tints. Now, I don't know if you can get these anymore or not, but I live by these things. They weigh a ton, which suggests to me there's probably lead in them. And of course, if you eat it, it will kill you. If you paint with it, it won't. Uh, and I used a bit of this red and a bit of this ochre color. And what I got, if you look over here, is I got, well, let me shake it up. Oh yes, and I added some distilled water to it. You don't want to use tap water because tap water is full of stuff that will create mold after a while. And what I got was this color here. Now, if we compare it over to here, you can see it's, it's darn near identical. Hopefully I don't rip it on my computer, but you can see it's very, very close. When it dries, it's gonna be a little darker. So I'm very pleased with that. And you're probably, thinking, what are you gonna do? Paint this with a paintbrush? You can't do that. You gotta use an airbrush. Well, they didn't use an airbrush on 2001. They used a brush, because I can see the brush strokes in it. And I'm just gonna brush it on like that, just the way they did. And it'll probably take a few coats, but you see these brush streak strokes? that are in there, the original has this. That's probably gonna take a couple of, of, of coats to make it, you know, all the same color evenly. But uh, all of a sudden, it starts to really look like that star child. This is exciting doing this. This is like reliving history, thinking that somebody did this back almost 50 years ago. It will be 50 years uh, next year, which is next month. And so I'm gonna do this over the entire thing and then let it dry and then do another coat. And when we come back, you will see a completed painted Star Child. And this is done exactly, I'm pretty much 100% sure this is how they did it. Because I've showed you the pictures before, you people that have been following along and you can clearly see the brush strokes and the whole bit, so I can't wait till this dries so I can put another coat on. I've almost got the whole face. And 
Out of the neck. The bubbles are bothering me. I don't know what those are a result of, but they they will pop and go away. Don't know what's causing the bubbles. That water might be pretty old, I don't know. But they uh, usually just go back down. Pop. So when we come back, you'll see this all painted uh, in a bubble with the eyes moving. And uh, no, just kidding, but you'll see it all painted. Really? Wow, so here it is. Uh, I still need another coat of paint on it, but it's really, it looks so much like the original. If, it, aside from the fact it, it's not aged, and somehow I have to figure a way to age it and get it yellower and stuff, but uh, we'll work on that. Probably some airbrushing, <laughs> you know, to go into the cracks. Some of the paint's not even dry, but as you can really, it's, it's and these are the old eyeballs that I made very quickly with a felt pen on ping pong balls for the sculpture. Now they're clearly not the right size. The actual eyes are 29 millimeter, which leave a dark gap in these corners. And that really also contributes to how this looks. But I wanted to see it with some eyes in. And until I have the actual eyes, which I'm probably gonna end up making myself, uh, I wanted to see this. But I, I am just, uh, I am so pleased. It's so beautiful and I'm so uh, proud of this uh, and be able to do this for the 50th anniversary uh, of 2001. I'm really, really happy about this. So um, that, for now, finishes how you make a star child, uh, which I think we're up to number six or seven parts. Uh, I will show you more because we're gonna we're gonna finish off Adam Savage's uh, next week. And uh, Tyler opened up the head and and hollowed it out. Well, it was already hollow, but and carved out one of the eyes and stuff. He started feeling a little ill, so he went home uh, early. Uh, and there's the top of the head. So this will this basically is done. I am going to come back and I am going to show you uh, what I'm going to do to get the eyes to move. And I'm sure uh, Adam will also post on the internet what he does untested. So uh, so this doesn't end the series, but Pretty much, if you were going to make something like this from the amount of parts that we've done so far, you know how to do this. As long as you can sculpt and mold and follow along, you can make anything this way and have a nice, cool, organic sculpture or even something like what Rob Berman did when he sculpted a helmet all out of clay. And he did it, you know, mechanically by cutting the clay very precisely and putting it together, then made a mold on it, the same way I made a mold on this, and made this really cool helmet, which really impressed the hell out of me. Uh, so these are really good things to know, good skills to have to make just about anything. Thanks for following along. I'll be back for Moving Eyes uh, in a while.